Hello and welcome to Lore Fenton Gaming Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. I'm your host, Lore Fenton. In this Don't Panic series, we're going to go ahead and cover Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. This is one of the many new player guides. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more new player guides like this. Do not forget to hit that notification bell so will be updated much more. Why I'm in my underwear, there's no force powers, I don't have a lightsaber, I'm supposed to be a uh, Jedi, these droids are trying to kill me, help! Don't panic, help is on the way. So uh, this guide will cover from uh, character creation, classes, combat and tactics, and many other uh, factors as uh, well, plus a few tips along the uh, way. So let's start off with, of course, saving and loading. The very first thing you want to know about is saving and loading in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. Since at the time um, when this game was built, it was a bit rushed on some ends and there were some serious bugs or bugs that appear from time to time. So that's why you want to always save your game. That's important. Also, uh, save your game when you're about to face a boss or when Atten says uh, something. Yeah, the uh, tutorial and on the uh, Progress uh, 2 station will tell you uh, that. Now, you can switch between characters, which is good and all. However, there is a limited number of saves you could have. Number, limit number is 999. The uh, 1000 save is your auto save, so be careful on uh, that if you're doing multiple playthroughs like I have. There's a last word of advice I'm going to go ahead and give. Save often, save early. You may never know when you run into danger or into serious uh, trouble. In Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, you start out as one of the three base Jedi classes, which is the Jedi Guardian, Jedi Sentinel, and Jedi Consular. I'm also going to go ahead and list the other classes you cannot play as, or if your party members are those uh, classes. So, here we go on uh, that. Here are the three player classes. I'm going to go into depth of each of them. First of all, it's the Jedi uh, Guardian. Focus more on melee combat than force combat. So, in other words, is when you get your lightsaber, or you have it holding in both hands, or one in each hand, you're going to tear up the battlefield before you get your prestige class, depending on what choice you uh, make. Now, uh, they get the most feats out of the Jedi classes. That means uh, almost every level they get a feat. Unfortunately, their skill points are really lacking because they uh, basically, uh, if they're, I say, for example, at 10 intelligence, they get one skill point. And force powers, uh, they get one uh, force uh, power per level. It's not like the Jedi Constellar where they sometimes get two. Now, uh, Jedi Sentinel, on the other hand, is a balance between melee and force combat due to the fact they're uh, attributes and such. Yeah, so they'll have a bit more uh, force points than a uh, Jedi Guardian, but not a Jedi Consular. Now, uh, here's the deal. They get the most skill points out of all the Jedi classes, which makes them really useful. There are some uh, good feats they get as well. Jedi Sentinel, I'm going to go ahead and mention. They get three immunities, which I think was Stun, Fear, and Paralyzation. Now, another thing is they get the equal amount of uh, force powers, just like the Jedi Guardian. Now, last but not least is the Jedi Consular. Heavy focus on force power usage. In other words, you're going to be using a lot of force points, just use a lot of force powers. Gets the most force powers out of the three Jedi classes. They're the second best for the skills, and as for feats, they're a little bit feat starved. However, they get a lot of force power, so once in a while, say you get one per level, you get two per level. Plus, their, uh, uh, one of their feats has direct challenge, which is uh, very good for force usage. Uh, unlike the Jedi Guardian, who has a uh, force jump, which you're going to need a lightsaber in, uh, in order to uh, do that. Jedi Consular doesn't need any lightsabers to do uh, anything, basically just cast force powers and that's it. Let's uh, move on to the NPC classes. Here are the NPC classes part one. The reason why I'm doing this is for a few reasons. Number one, knowledge is power. Number two, you want to know who your, joins your party and what their job is. And number three, many of these uh, classes, with exception of the tech specialists, are from the first game. So it's like a nice refresher course on that too. Let's go over the uh, soldier class, uh, frontline fighters, who gets the most feats out of the non-Jedi classes. I didn't say uh, uh, melee and such, for example, because the fact is you could make him a blaster type of character. And if you decide to make him a Jedi class later on, yeah, that's uh, really uh, nice. However, they are skill starved, just like the Jedi Guardian. Now, scouts, more focused on range combat, the most balanced of the four non-Jedi classes. So, they're the second best actually getting uh, skill points. Now, uh... Their uh, range combat feats are very powerful. Precise, I think, ends at, uh, if I remember right, 21 or 20, while, uh, of course, targeting ends at 29. So you got a lot of blaster feats there. Yeah, some of them, uh, like, for example, uh, Mira. Yeah, she's great with a blaster in each uh, hand. 
Scoundrels focus on sneak attacks and stealth options. I'm going to go ahead and say this now. That sneak attack is very OP. So if your main character, for example, casts a Sandy, a whole bunch of foes, they're holding their heads. Anton, who's a scoundrel, can do extra damage, especially with a blaster in each hand. Very OP. Also, there are a tie for the most skill points, which is great. Tech Specialist, this is uh, new to uh, the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic series, focus on the skill points aspects of the game. So they're really great at for skills and such. Uh, tie for the most skill points. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. Bayo Dur, your party member, you can make him a 100% crafter. He'll be one of the most useful party members. That's not in the combat. He'll craft your things up, which is really nice. Time to go over to droid classes. There's only two droid classes in the game. So first is combat droid can use blaster pistol and blaster rifle feats. You heard that right. Yeah, they get to do more damage with that. Has some more uh, combat feats than the expert droid. They have the precise feat. You know, just trust me. HK-47, if done right, could do some nice uh, damage. Now, expert droid focus on uh, skills and other non-combat factors. Yeah, you see them more doing uh, stuff in the skill department as uh, well. They can only use the blaster pistol, but that's all right. They could do a blaster niche, I think. Unit has more uh, skill-related feats than the uh, combat droid, obviously. That's about it for the uh, classes. So for the player classes, uh, just remember Jedi Guardian is more of a front life fighter. Jedi Sentinel is more of a skill slash balance uh, type of Jedi. And Jedi Consular is more of a heavy force uses type of character, aka like the Dungeon Dragon Wizards. Now uh, next up for this uh, guy we're going to talk about is Attributes. In Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords, Attributes are different than the first game. Here we go. Strength, uh, this means that uh, you're more prowess with melee weapons, lightsabers, and of course, uh, fists. Yeah, unarmed combat. So, more strength you have, that means more damage and more chance to hit. Now, in the first game, uh, it covered uh, blasters and such, but they separated in this one. Now, dexterity this time around is uh, more dexterity you have, you have more defense, and uh, also uh, high dexterity means you have attack rolls on blaster weapons and ranged weapons, so you do more damage with uh, dexterity with uh, blasters and such. Constitution, that gives you vitality points exactly like the first game. However, it's no longer implant feats in the game. So, in this time around with constitution, also more constitution points you have, more implants you can equip. So, the highest uh, constitution you want is 18. So, you equip all the implants in the entire game. And there are some good implants around uh, 18. Now, uh, next up is intelligence. Uh, this means it's more intelligence. That also means there's a more uh, skill points you have. Also, some options in uh, dialogue requires high intelligence. That is great for uh, scoundrels, scouts, tech specialists, and Jedi sentinels. Uh, wisdom uh, does is uh, gives you more force points and, of course, uh, adds to your uh, force power saving throws. Also, makes it harder, more likely, for your uh, force powers to be resisted if you have high wisdom. Now, uh, charisma uh, does this is. Uh, Lessen the penalty on opposite alignment. So if you're a light side uh, force user, you're using a uh, force storm. You have high charisma. Yeah, it'll cost the penalty will be lessened. Also, uh, charisma is great as uh, well for you uh, guessed it for uh, talking skills. So if you want to go uh, frontline melee fighter, you go for strength builds. If you want to go for range combat, dex builds or force uh, powers, it's uh, wisdom slash charisma. And that's about it for uh, this uh, section. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 skill points are exactly like the uh, first game. So if it's like a green highlight that is a cross-class skill, this will cost you uh, two points. I am serious. And if anything like a uh, orange or uh, yellowish uh, highlight, it costs one. That's your class skill. Remember that. Plan accordingly on that end. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about first is computer use. So computer use means its ability to slice in the computer program so this way you you get the uh, turn to do something for you, disable a turn and such. It costs computer spikes. More in computer use, less amount of spikes you uh, need. Now, there's a few dialogue that does require computer use. Uh, demolition, uh, you'd be able to set, recover, or disarm mines. And yeah, you do get e EXP points for recovering mines. There's a trick on that. Now, this is a very valuable skill for a Jedi uh, Sentinel and a few droids. Uh, stealth uh, does is uh, makes you uh, camouflage with a stealthing device. Sometimes you, there's a force power in one of the prestige classes allow you to stealth. Only time you get spies awareness uh, check uh, hits you. You lose against that. Uh, you're not there's not much stealth in the game, but still you want to go for it. That's fine for crafting reasons. 
awareness, ability to spot uh, enemies that are stealth or certain objects that are hidden. Very good skill. This is also in dialogue too. Very important on uh, some of the uh, base classes to have that high. Now, uh, next up, I'm going to go ahead and talk about is Persuade. That is back. It's exactly the same as the first game. Exactly the same as it's important from the first game. Ability to talk to people to uh, sway them one way or another, which is uh, very uh, good. And let me tell you, most important skill for all Jedi classes, you want that maxed out. Now I'm going to go over to the next one I think is equally important too as Persuade. That is a Repair. A repair is ability to repair droids, machine, and uh, whatever you want to do on that. And another thing is it's also used to uh, break down components. More in uh, Repair, more components you get. There's a certain cap though for certain components you can get from Repair, but that is very powerful stuff. Uh, Jedi class should always max out repair as well. If you want to uh, go ahead and use a feat to uh, uh, make it a class skill and then uh, max it out that way too. And believe me, it's useful. Security, that's ability to uh, open up any containers that are locked or any uh, doors that are uh, locked too without using a uh, mine. Be careful though because if you decide not to use security and bash open containers, you might get broken items. Now, a uh, treat injury that is used to uh, determine how much you can heal from a medic pack. More in treat injury, more likely to heal. And if you have those uh, better medic packs later on, you get to heal a lot more. So, my final advice on skills plan accordingly. Make sure persuades the number one skill. Same thing as uh, repair two. Uh, those two should be maxed out. Awareness and uh, I say treat injury, you should uh, max out if you need to. Like, for example, with the Jedi Consular or so. That's about it for this uh, section. Now, for feats, there are so many feats to go over, so I'm only going ahead and get some advice. Now, for the uh, Duelist feat, that is holding a lightsaber or a melee weapon in hand, you get plus one to attack rolls and defense. While dual wielding, you hold a weapon in each hand. The penalty for to hit is a uh, lesson as you go further down the tree. So, either select Duelist, uh, holding a one-handed weapon in both hands, or a, a dual wielding one weapon in each hand as well. And if you're a melee frontline fighter, at least the, uh, pick uh, Flurry which gives you extra attack or a power attack is a uh, minus to hit but a lot of damage as uh, well. There's uh, force regeneration points so uh, go for that as well especially if you're a Jedi Consular. As for well, weapon focus feet pick one so if you're using lightsabers go for that. If you decide to go something off feet like blaster piercers do that as uh, well. Uh, as always check out the feats and read what they are. Some of them you automatically do gain. And Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, just like the first game, alignment is mainly through dialogue where you either gain light side or uh, dark side uh, points. So if you want to gain uh, light side going up on the meter, that means uh, yeah, you have to be compassionate, kind, self-sacrificing, not ask for uh, credits at all. Anything else make you a good guy or gal. In other words, uh, don't be a bully. Now, if you want to be a dark side character, be a bully, be mean, distort, threaten, kill, maim, murder, be a psychotic uh, SOB. Now in this case, uh, my light side Jedi Consular is uh, concerned about Kraya and such. Because of that, I gained some light side alignment. So uh, the colors for that is simple. If that's like a light green slash uh, blue, you'll see it. That means uh, that's a light side point. It usually uh, glows like a white light or so around your uh, character. Now uh, red means it's dark side. Yeah, that means you hear a, a forbidding theme. Now, does this factor in force power cost? Absolutely. So uh, more points on the light side, the more cheaper light side powers are. More on the dark side, the uh, cheaper dark side powers are. Except for with opposite alignments. So if you're a light side user, it'll cost more to use dark side powers. Universal powers are always a flat cost. Next up is dialogue and skills parts. Since we are still on the dialogue part of this guide, dialogue is not only for alignment, also you can use skill points as well to access certain things in the dialogue, also certain attributes as well uh, too. You'll uh, see that through the game in some points, like for example awareness. If you have very high awareness or so, there's an extra option. Sometimes that extra option will open up your uh, other uh, dialogue trees or even uh, better rewards. So uh, definitely a good idea if your main character has awareness in it. Go ahead and talk to the uh, person this way. See if you get anything extra out of it. Our lovely dark Jedi uh, Sentinel before she goes full dark side is going to demonstrate this next section. On the uh, upper left that's your mini map where you are on the map. 
on the upper right that's your uh, menu where you can access some stuff lower right that's your character's health looks like their alignment buffs they have debuffs uh, the uh, hourglass is uh, pausing combat pausing time and the two weapons that switch in your uh, weapon sets now on the uh, lower left that's your uh, toolbar uh, from your stances and uh, more your health packs and such now aggressive stance that means you're aggressive you'll charge in no matter what you don't need to switch weapons uh, range you stay in range until folks get close to you and you automatically switch to a fist fighting one avoid the range one uh, stationary you attack but you don't move great for range and such but you don't switch weapons Jedi support that means uh, you buff up before using an aggressive stance now there is a uh, purple slash uh, pink orb that means there will be more of a generating force outside combat, a little bit more force damage for those who are like Jedi Consulars or any of the uh, prestige uh, heavy force users as uh, well. Now um, for the uh, menu, uh, uh, this section here has covered your equipment, what you can wear, what you cannot wear. Red means you cannot wear it at all. So uh, this is where all your items are at. Also show you how much credit you have. Yeah, Rev is poor, 404 credits. You can also uh, filter that. That's your uh, character sheet. From your attributes, vitality, force points, your saving throws, how much spirits you need to go and such. This is uh, where your force powers are at, your skills first, and your feats. Now there's your skills. There's modifier uh, if you have a certain uh, attribute in there that's higher, that will boost that modifier. And there's your force powers. You see why I told you before, since she's a dark side uh, character, it costs less to use uh, shock versus uh, heal. It costs more. You'll get some force uh, powers free throughout the game. There's your feats as well. Uh, some you get level up, some you get automatically. This is your party member screen. And yeah, you can't select the little one right now, but eventually you get to select party members. This is your journal. This will tell you your main uh, story quest, your uh, side quest. This is also your dialogue as well, too, uh, which is uh, good. So yeah, you want to get some quests done, that's fine. Now this is your uh, map. Instead of the main map, it just tells you where you're at. Use this arrow to uh, see what's uh, there and mark for that. This is your menu option for save, loading, and gameplay. Now, easy difficulty uh, means that the game's real easy. Folks will be really soft on you. Normal, that's the middle of the road. I advise playing on normal. If not, go on easy. Now, if this game's not really a challenge, go to difficult. Folks will hit harder, more uh, vitality points. It'll be tougher. Avoid the auto level, level, level up, please, everyone. I'm serious. Don't do it. And last but not least, always pause uh, your uh, before, during, and uh, sometimes after combat in case there's some uh, serious uh, danger. That's why it's for this section. Now, for uh, items, there's uh, so many different types of items. There's mines to uh, lay down traps, grenades to throw bombs at people, especially ion grenades against droids. Med packs are uh, used uh, to heal organics. Uh, repair kits, construction kits are used to repair uh, droids. And uh, stems are used to boost up your uh, character who are organic uh, attributes and uh, such like that. Experiment those on your own time so this way you see what's good and uh, more. There's also uh, quest items too. Just uh, go ahead and hit quest if you need to look at that too. When you first start out in uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, you're not going to have uh, much. Always use the pause screen so this way you know what you're going. And uh, the style left option, that means we're selecting our... Uh, Melee feet stances and such. The middle usually are force powers, and the right's usually like grenades. Still, uh, always uh, test out combat when you first there, see what uh, works for you and what not works for you. I'm gonna go over some next uh, combat tactics that are a little bit more advanced. Eventually, down the line, you uh, get an advanced combat. As always, uh, when you crowd control, sometimes buff up. That's a great idea. So this way, sometimes you do more uh, damage, force power, or uh, melee damage. As always, lock down your foes. I'm using Insanity. That's one of the lockdown uh, abilities. That's dark side. Stasis one's for the light side version. And there's the droid one that's light side, but it uh, sun droids. And uh, once your foes are locked down, go on the offensive. Either force power or uh, melee. It depends on what your uh, flavor is. And if you're a Jedi uh, Sentinel or any of the uh, prestige classes with sneak attack, one of those two classes, yeah. When a foe's locked down, go crazy. Either melee or ranged weapons. Uh, that's about it for combat. One last advice. Experiment, experiment, experiment. See what works and see what it does not work. When you do get enough experience points, it is time to level up. Sometimes some classes or some characters you want to withhold them leveling up until uh, you get a class change. So let's level up our uh, character. This guy's a dark side user. 
and he's a Jedi Consular. So, yep, there's our uh, feats. We get sometimes we get uh, feats, sometimes we don't. Uh, skills put the skill points in. As for attributes, every uh, level of four character levels, you get yourself a free attribute point. Plan accordingly, depending on what your class is. Now, uh, for skill points, uh, I mean powers, yeah, for force powers, I should say. Pick which one is your alignment. Focus on mainly your alignment stuff, but if you're like a Jedi Consular or you want to deviate, then do get some uh, light side and universal powers as well. Since I'm a dark side character, I'm going to go ahead and pick shock. Light side, good idea. Start with uh, stun droids. It's a lot of them. Now, uh, as for, uh, like I said before, alignment costs uh, force point powers. Just remember that. Plan accordingly. So if you're a frontline melee fighter, uh, go for more melee feats. Anything uh, force powers related to it. If you're a Jedi Consular, more uh, heavy force power usage. When the uh, time is right, uh, in other words, when you're 75% in alignment, you're light or uh, dark. And, of course, character level 15 of your base Jedi class is time to go for a prestige class. Now, prestige class is more powerful versions of the three uh, Jedi base classes. So, once you get the two, uh, I say, requirements done, the third one is simply talk to Kraya. So, let's go ahead and talk to her. And she says, ah, you are here. You felt it, did you not? It basically, she's basically saying it is time to uh, go from the base class to the prestige classes. She'll uh, tell you all that. However, I'm going to go into uh, much more uh, depth, and here we go on uh, this. This is just a friendly reminder. I want to post this again. So this is why this is in uh, text form. Prestige class of requirements. First of all, saying 5% into alignment, light or dark. So uh, remember, uh, once you pass any 5%, that is uh, fine. Uh, make sure your character is level 15 in a Jedi class. That is the uh, Jedi Guardian, Consular, or uh, Jedi Sentinel. After 1 and 2 is done, speak with Kraya. Then she'll tell you it's time. And then you uh, pick the uh, prestige class you want. Go for the prestige class ASAP. As soon as you hit level 15, find Kraya. Kraya is not in your party. Do not level up beyond 15. So here's the light side prestige classes. For those of you who are walking the path of the light side, here's the first one, Jedi Weapon Master, more uh, focus in melee combat. Yep, that's right, lightsabers. You heard me right. Has extra lightsaber and dual wielding feats. Yeah, you get three of those extra ones each. You do more damage, more to hit. You uh, guessed it all. Now, Jedi Wa uh, Watchman has some sneak attacks. There's a limit on uh, that. And it's balanced between the three prestige classes. I didn't list this, but they have camouflage. Which helps you out in uh, stealth, and you don't need a stealth belt for it because of this force power. Jedi Master, uh, more focused on using force powers, can inspire your party members the most as uh, well. They also have a power I didn't mention, it's called Inspire Followers, makes them uh, to hit enemies more often, make them do more uh, damage and such. Let's go over to the dark side. Now, the first dark side prestige class is a Sith Marauder. More focus in melee combat, like a Jedi Weapon Master has the uh, extra uh, lightsaber and dual wielding feats as well. Same as its counterpart, however, it has Fury Force Power to boost damage at the cost of your defense. You see the screen growing red? You're just in a uh, killing mode. Now, Sith Assassin has all the sneak attacks. I didn't say uh, uh, some, but it has all. Now, the uh, Jedi Watchman only has some. This one has all of them. Also, it's balanced between the three prestige classes I'm uh, listing as uh, well. They do have the uh, Watchman feat, uh, which is the uh, camouflage too. Yeah, so in other words, they could go stealth. But this one's more uh, evil than that. Now, last but not least, is the Sith Lord. More uh, focused on using force powers can inspire your party members one way or another. Same thing as a Jedi uh, Master. Now, the uh, difference with a Sith Lord is, is uh, they debuff foes. In other words... Uh, they get minus two hit and also minus the will saves, which means more likely your uh, dark side powers and uh, such will uh, connect more often than not. That's about it for uh, prestige classes. Let's go over to the next section. Let's uh, go over uh, opening up doors. You can use mines, which is demolitions, to open up a door, bash it like if you don't have the other skills, or security to open up the uh, door. Now, if you mess up once, you could try again. But if it's impossible, use a uh, tunneler or uh, something like that to bust it open. So I'm going to go ahead and open the door and then uh, talk about containers as well. Containers work like doors, except if you decide to bash it in or use a mine, you could destroy the item. It'll be a broken item. You don't want that. So uh, definitely use someone with, uh, say, security to open things up so this way they uh, get what you need. 
As for uh, this console, uh, use your uh, computer use to uh, use computer options or uh, repair to uh, you know or repair like droids and such like that. Know uh, when to use the uh, three skills or uh, so, and know when you to uh, send someone else and to uh, do the work uh, for you. In Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, the uh, melee damage types are blunt, piercing, and slashing. You can protect yourself with force powers or uh, shields with that. Elemental uh, damage is electric, uh, sonic, fire, ice, and uh, of course uh, energy. Uh, use a shield for that as well. Some force powers will protect you from it. Uh, know what to protect yourself if your opponent is using something like, for example, if it's a Sith using a lightsaber, protect yourself from energy or uh, so like that. Know your damage types. Now, uh, for equipment, if you're a frontline fighter, make sure you have a melee weapon in each hand or a holding one weapon in each hand. And by the way, dual edge blades and lightsabers count as dual wielding. Now, uh, if you're a, a strength user, make sure you pack your uh, character with strength. Uh, if you're a blaster user, make sure it's dexterity. Uh, heavy force user, wisdom, and such. Now, if you're using the force, uh, your, uh, your force use robes or if you don't want to use rubs, uh, definitely uh, go ahead, go for light armor that allows you to use force powers. Know what items to use and when to uh, equip them so this way you can take full advantage of them all. And Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords, there's a total 12 companions. You see 10 on the screen, well, there are some uh, based on gender, so if you're a male main character, you get Handman to join you. Why females, they get Disciple. Now, uh, when you get to that city urban uh, planet, well, you get Mirror if you're light side alignment or uh, dark side if you're Hanhar. If you're using mods, you might be able to choose between the other ones. Still, know who your companions are and uh, know how they uh, work. As always, I'm going to go ahead and say again, experiment, experiment, experiment. If you really need help, I have another video that has tier rankings and builds. So this way, you build your companions the correct way. Next up on the list is Force Powers. In Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, just like the first game, there are three types of Force Powers. We're not going to do stances or anything like that. Experiment on your own time. There's Universal Powers that doesn't cost a thing. Light Side Powers, so if you Light Side Alignment, it'll cost less. Your Dark Side Character will cost more to use Light Side Powers. And finally, Dark Side Powers. If your Dark Side Characters will cost less to use them, why uh, Light Side uh, Characters cost uh, more to use those. I'm going to go over each and every one of the powers. The first one on the uh, list I am uh, going over is the light side of the force. Here are the uh, first set of light side powers. So for the force aurora line, boosts defense and saving throws by in tier one is two points of those. Four uh, for the second tier and six for uh, defense and saving throws for the final tier. Now force barrier shaves off four points. Uh, blunt piercing slashing damage in tier 1 for tier 2 it's up to 8 points and tier 3 is up to 12 points now force valor first tier buffs all stats and saving throws by 2 for the party it's a party favor second and third tier does the stats and saving throws by 3 and 5 plus both of those tiers are immune to a poison by the way force valor is a party favor buff this is great for party members so let's move on to the next set of light side powers here are more light side powers heal. Tier 1 heals does his 5 vitality plus charisma mod plus wisdom mod and character level for the entire party. Now this is an example. So if you're level 10 with a charisma mod of 5 and wisdom mod of 5, you get healed for 25 points because yeah, there's 10 plus 5 is 15. Then another 5 is uh, 20. Then of course the uh, base 5 is 25. Yeah, simple math. Now again, uh, works for all party members. I'm repeating it twice. It's a heal spell. Tier 2 does 15 Vitality plus Charisma Mod plus Wisdom Mod and Character Level. Now this tier removes Poison only. The third tier does 15 Vitality Points plus Charisma Mod plus Wisdom Mod and double the Character Level. Now this also heals in Tier 3 is Cure and Stuns. Revitalize Tier 1 res 1 character with 5% health back so you have to pick which one you want to bring back from the dead. Now Tier 2 res all down party members with 5% health back while Tier 3 Res all down party members with 10% health back. Let's get to the final set of light side powers. Here are the final set of light side powers. I did withhold a few purposely. I'll explain why towards the end of this section. Stun. Uh, tier 1 stuns one non-droid for 9 seconds. 
Now uh, tier 2 stuns one non-droid for 12 seconds, while tier 3 stuns all non-droids within 10 meters for 12 seconds. All three tiers can be resisted or in some cases immune to it, so be careful. Now uh, stun droid, uh, this is the droid version of stun. Tier 1 can stun one droid for 12 seconds and damage is based off on uh, character level. Uh, tier 2 spreads to 10 meters of droids with the same effect as tier 1. While tier 3, uh, uh, all droids get stunned within 10 meters, and it, the damage is scales up to 1 to 6 points per character level. That's called destroy droid, or uh, kill droid. Forgot the name of it, but it's very powerful stuff. Now again, it can be resisted, these droids to it, or they're immune to it, so do be careful on it. The last of the light side powers I withheld intentionally, since they're story ones, I don't want to spoil it, that's the reason. That's about it for this section, next up is universal powers. Next up are the Universal Force powers. Please note that there's no alignment cost for either of them, light or uh, dark side, so they're more of a neutral uh, thing. Afflict Mind can make others do things they do not do in dialogue. Now be careful, there might be some alignment hits to it. Now the other ones, Dominate Mind, more powerful version than Afflict Mind. Only player characters, by the way, get this. Battle Meditation, here's three tiers of it. Tier 1 gives the party members plus 2 attack, damage, and will saves, also health regeneration included. Two, tier 2 does the same thing for party members also, in addition to that, if your foes fail a will saves, they get minus 2 to attack, damage, and uh, will saves. They also, uh, party members get that regeneration as well. Tier 3 gives the party members the following, plus 4 attack, damage, and will saves, and the same regeneration. While foes, if they uh, do not resist, aka fail their will saves, get minus 4 to attack, damage, and will saves. Let's move on to the next ones. Burst of Speed. Tier 1 gives double speed and, of course, uh, plus 2 defense. Double speed as in double speed movement. Tier 2 gives you 1 extra attack per round for defense and double speed movement. Now, Tier 3 gives you 2 at extra attacks per round for defense and double speed movement. Best force power in the entire game, in my mind. Get it ASAP if you can. Energy resistance. Tier 1 is a self buff that shaves off elemental damage, which is, of course, uh, fire, cold, electric, sonic, and energy by 6 points. Tier 2 turns into a party buff and shaves off elemental damage by 12. Tier 3 is the same as uh, Tier 2 for the party, yet it shaves off elemental damage by 20. If you're really cheap, good force power to use. Force body fuels force powers and usually takes 50% uh, health and force points uh, in uh, tier 1. In tier 2, that penalty drops down to 40% and tier 3 drops down to 30%. It's alright uh, universal power if you want to use it, but I really use it. Let's move on to the next uh, universal powers. Now, uh, next up on the uh, list for Universal Powers Part 3 is Force Deflection. Deflects Blaster Damage away from the user. This is automatic. Great for hand-to-hand uh, -hand fighters, and I found out recently, range fighters. Force Redirection redirects Blaster Damage back to the attacker, and uh, the Force user gets a, a plus 3 deflection rolls. This, too, is automatic. Force Push. Push one foe to the ground. They get stunned for a few seconds. Damage is based off of character level. Now, Force Whirlwind uh, push one target away and locks them into place for uh, 12 seconds. So the damage is one third character level for every two seconds. Now, the other one is Force uh, Wave. All targets around Force user gets pushed away and they get stunned. Uh, the damage is 1.5 times character level. This lasts is six seconds. That damage is off the wall. Let's move on to part four of the Universal Powers. Force resistance protects against all force powers, so uh, this is 1d20 attacker level versus 10 plus the defender level. If you win the roll, you get 60 seconds of protection. If not, you get nothing. The upgrade to that is force immunity protects uh, against all force powers. This is a 1d attacker level versus 15 plus defender level. Win the roll, you get 60 seconds of protection, if not nada. For uh, both of those, higher your character level, more likely this will work. Force Suppression removes Tier 1 and Tier 2 of Force Buffs. Force Breach removes all Force Buffs. Both of those uh, removers are great. Mind Trick tr distracts non-droids for 30 seconds. Force Confusion, more powerful version of Mind Trick. Both can be resisted or immune to it. Let's get to the last set of Universal Powers. 
Throw a lightsaber. You throw your lightsaber at a single target. They take one to six damage per two character level. You get your weapon back after, just like Dark Vader throws a lightsaber, except for you don't you don't miss with this one. Now, a higher the character level, more damage you do. Advance throw lightsaber. You throw your lightsaber and up. Yes, you guessed it. To three targets, take one to six damage per two character level. You get your weapon back again. Higher the level, more damage you uh, do. That's about it for universal force powers. There's others that are universal powers I did not say on purpose, so I left that intentionally uh, out there for y'all to discover. Next up, dark side powers. The first dark side power we're going to go over is drain force. Now, uh, here's the deal about that. The uh, first tier drains 10 force points from one target to you. Now, uh, the deal about that also is if it gets resisted, it's uh, 5. It cuts in half. Also, this is very important about this force power that uh, if for some reason they don't have 10 exactly, like for example, they have 8, you'll get the 8 force points. 4 if it's half. In other words, it does not go over the amount. So if they have no force points, this is a useless uh, power. Now, uh, Tier 2, drain 20 force points or uh, 10 if it's resistant from one target. Now, Tier 3 is different than the other two tiers. Drains a total of 30 uh, force points on all targets around him. If uh, many of them resist or so, then it's 15 force points you uh, get if it's uh, resistor, of course. Now, uh, that's it for uh, Drain Force. Next up is Drain Life, um, no, I should say Tree. Now, uh, Drain Life, uh, the first tier is uh, one target gets one to fourth health drain per uh, character level and heals the user. Resist means you only get half. You get half heal. This is emergency heal. Now, uh, next up is Death Feel. All foes around gets one to fourth health drain per uh, character level. And heals the user. Very uh, good stuff. It's like a mercy heal. Can't be resisted. Means only half uh, damage. Half heal. Now let's move on to the next set. Let's uh, go over the fear line. So first of all is fear. Makes one foe locked down. A.K.A. crowd controlled. For exactly six seconds. Now if it's resisted. Nothing happens. This is just for one target. Downside of this is it can be immune for, uh, from certain foes, like for example bosses or uh, Jedi Sentinels you're facing. So it's a fact they have one of the uh, feats that has immune to that. Next up is uh, Horror. Makes a group of foes can be uh, locked down for 12 seconds. A bit more powerful than uh, Fear. Can't be resisted. Nothing happens. If it's immune, yeah, that means that uh, you can, of course, do Horror against them. There are some foes that are, like, for example, immune to, for instance, bosses, or if they have a certain uh, item or implant that has that. Now, uh... Last but not least is Insanity, just like Horror, but much more powerful. This lasts for a total of 18 seconds. Again, it can be resisted, but it's uh, rarely, especially if you have a high wisdom, I should say, heavy force user. Now, once again, some bosses are immune to that. So that's it for the Fear line. Next is the Force Scream line. So for Force Scream Tier 1, all foes in front of, of the uh, uh, caster that is not droids, aka okay, organics, can take 3 to 18 sonic damage and lose 2 attribute points, aka okay, stats. Now, if they resist that, they take half the damage and no stat loss. Now, to your two, the damage is up, bump up to 5 to 30 sonic damage and 4 stat losses. Resistance, again, they take half no uh, stat, aka attribute losses. And tier 3 this time, this is different than tier 1 and 2. It's all around. Damage is now 7 to 42 sonic damage and uh, 6 stat points are lost. Uh, once again, if anyone of them resist it, they uh, don't lose the stats at all, aka attributes. And the damage is half. So let's move on to the next set of dark side powers. Next up is the force lightning line. One of the most powerful dark side powers in the entire game. So here's the first one. Force shock. Single target takes 1 to 6 damage per character level. Can be resisted. If that happens, it's half the damage. Now a uh, higher your uh, level goes, more damage you do, obviously. Now next up is uh, force lightning. Targets in front of the caster. Takes 1 to 6 damage per character level. Again, resist is half. This is like more of a arc type of thing, just like Emperor Palpatine. Last but not least, uh, the most powerful dark side power in the entire game, that's not story, is Force Storm. All targets around, uh, the tar uh, I say, caster takes 1 to 6 damage per character level, can be resisted. Also, some other modifiers makes it much more uh, damaging. Believe me, I call this a room clear. I even have some light side characters using it. It'll cost more, but you know what? It's a great way to clear out some enemies. That's about it for the Force uh, Lightning line. Next up is the Plague line, I call it. You'll see why. Now, uh, first one in the Plague line is slow. Your character 
that you're targeting. Move slow, minus two defense, reflect safe and attack rolls. Now affliction, that's the upgraded version, targets poison. They take uh, minus one attributes, okay, stats every six seconds for 21 seconds. Now uh, next one is plague, target is poison and slow. It takes about one stat every six seconds for 12 seconds. Now here is the wrinkle for a uh, plague for your foes. Since it has a 100 DC direct challenge, that's impossible to resist unless you absolutely hack the living crap out of the game. Plague, in fact, you should definitely cast this on single target foes. So uh, this way, they take the stat damage and they get owned pretty badly. So let's go over the last set of dark side powers. Let's go over the choke line since I've decided to use Darth Vader's, of course, a uh, force power choke for uh, the name of this uh dark side online now first of all is wound target uh, takes two-thirds of the attackers uh, level for uh, every uh, two seconds for six seconds so for example if you that character is I should say uh, level 40 or so or 45 yeah let's go with 45 then of course uh, two-thirds of that is uh, 30 uh, damage now if they resist nothing happens obviously next up is a uh, choke for uh, tier 2 target takes two-thirds of attacker level for every two seconds for six seconds also, the target takes a minus 4 penalty to Constitution, Dexterity, and Strength for 24 more seconds just to recover. Last but not least is a Kill. Uh, target takes close to half of the target's health in uh, damage for 6 seconds. So, like for example, if their maximum health is 100 and they have about 40 health left, you could actually kill them off with a 4, I should say, a Kill. Uh, same penalty applies as Choke if they do survive. That's about it for Dark Side Powers, and yes, I did intentionally leave out some for a few surprises story-wise, or some that you want to discover for yourself. Now, uh, next up is uh, credits and uh, how shops work in Star Wars Knights of Old Republic 2 with some uh, tips. In Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, credits is the way of currency in the uh, game. So, yeah, if you have enough credits, you could use it to uh, bribe some NPCs and such like that. Now, as for shops, uh, they work the same as the first game. You can use the tab to uh, filter what you need to uh, go to. Also, you can sell some uh, items as well. There will be some items out there that it sells more than it's uh, worth. It will warn you about that. But still, if it's anything that you are no longer really using, you don't care about, sell it away. Just be, be very uh, careful what you uh, buy and sell. So, for this next section... I'm going to go ahead and give two advices, how to manipulate the shops for the first time, and of course, how to make your own trade route if you're not using any of the exploits to make money. I'm going to go ahead and give you all a special tip. Now, I discovered this actually, I should say, uh, one-third into my fifth playthrough of my Jedi Consort, the light side. I said, hmm, I should definitely did it. I got inspired by Might and Magic 6. With the differences in Might and Magic 6, you could save and reload every time you go to shop to get what you want to uh, get the spell books you uh, need. In this game, you can only get it for the first time to get it to work. So anyways, here's a tip on how to uh, get the items you want for the first time around your item level and what you really want. Now, uh, number one, uh, make a save in front of the shop you want to pull this off. Very important. Number two, go into the shop to see what you want to buy. So for instance... If you see a uh, plus uh, four wisdom belt you really want to buy or a uh, Sith Tremor Sword you really want to get, well, go ahead and uh, do that. So for some reason, those items, for instance, are not there, which you go to step three, reload the save that you just made, and just keep on going to the shop until you uh, get what you uh, need. I use this uh, so badly just to manipulate the uh, RNG system to go my way. You should definitely uh, do this. So... I'm going to read this very important line. Once this happens, then the shock will lock down the selection of uh, goods. I use this to get what I need, and I need for other uh, characters as well. Remember, this is only the first time for the uh, uh, shop that you visit. Other visits will be the same items that you uh, lock it down. So that's just a uh, reminder. So that's how you manipulate the shop. So next up is trade routes. Now, uh... I'm going to tell about how to make your own trade route, a.k.a. how to make some credits. This is a longer route than using a certain uh, trick that people have been talking about all over the internet. Uh, go ahead and Google that. Anyway, here's some steps. Buy parts from uh, Denis uh, Debo. That's the uh, good one on Telos. That's the uh, brothers who runs the shop there. Now, uh, once you buy the parts there, uh, then there's, there's a workbench on step two is turn those uh, parts into components. Uh, once you have enough components, make up to uh, 99 mile Davarian edges. 
They're very easy to make. In fact, have a uh, bail dirt to do it because you'll have, most likely have the uh, skill points to uh, make it for you or so. Now, uh, after you uh, do that, number four, go to, to uh, Dan and Wing once you have access to your uh, Evan Hawk ship. And if you kept Akiri secret, that's the alien that looks like a piece of face. That's what, what they said on Robot Chicken. You know what that alien is outside of, I say, the uh, compound. Yeah, once that alien is uh, there, you kept the secret, then he will uh, give you a discount. And at the same time, we'll give you more credits for I am sold to him. So guess what? You sell uh, those uh, 99 mile Davarian edges. Once you uh, do that, then of course you could go back and uh, repeat the process again from step one to four. Now I put step five there just in case for some reason you sided with the mercenaries and he's dead. Yeah, that one alien on Dan and Ween. Then uh, sell these parts to uh, Sam on, on uh, Telos. That's the bad one. If you're a dark side player, you'll only get a 65%, uh, I say credits back versus 75%, but still you'll make a little bit profit, but a little bit less than, of course, number four. Either way, after you uh, sold the uh, parts, repeat steps one to four, or uh, repeats one step uh, to uh, five if you're a dark side player. That is how you make legit credits. Now it'll take a long time to uh, get a high amount, but you know what? You just create yourself uh, your own trade route, very legit. And very easy to uh, do. Now, a word of warning though is that the re restoration mod content will actually uh, nerf the Nessus, uh, I should say, uh, parts. You have to look for another shop that has unlimited of them. But for base game, it will not do that. All right, everyone, uh, next up on the uh, list is the mini games. And Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, there's the Swoop mini games and, of course, the Pazak mini games. They're not important like the uh, first game, where the first game where you have to win 10 uh, Pazaka, I should say, matches against a certain Rodanian to get a hefty discount. And, of course, the uh, win some extra uh, credits and uh, more in the swoop races to get some extra uh, money in the uh, game. Now, uh, this time around with swoop races, you have to dodge objects and uh, jump over them. And uh, if you know how to do it, you'll easily beat that swoop mini uh, game. As for Zoc, they add some extra cards and a little bit of layers, but basically it's the uh, same just like the uh, first game. I'm going to go ahead and get some uh, tips on the uh, Pazak minigame, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the tips, so here we go. Number uh, one for the Pazak, how to win uh, matches and such. Try to buy some plus and minus cards. So uh, in other words, if you find a vendor has some plus and minus, definitely uh, go for them. So uh, for instance i.e. plus slash uh, three minus so this way you could switch between plus or minus for some reason if you cannot gain these plus and minus cards definitely go for the minus uh, number two go for two three and four cards because they're most commonly used so this way if you're a little bit over uh, 20 you could definitely use two three and four to uh, drop it down a bit as well uh, number three make sure you force your opponent to use all his or her cards so uh, this way your opponent is basically screwed so uh, number four is uh, this. Your opponent stops at 16 after all cards are uh, gone. So you stop at 17 to counter it. So try aim for 17 while your opponent goes for 16. This is a old Fallout New Vegas trick. And believe me, I use that trick to uh, win uh, a lot of the tables. It works here as uh, well. Thank you so much, Obsidian, for uh, that. Now, last but not least, uh, save your game before starting a match and load if you lose. If you win, save the game to bank the uh, credits. Now, there's other tips as well. I do not advise uh, try to run the table because you most likely use up all your cards. In other words, fill the table to win. But instead, try to uh, get uh, more matches win than uh, losses. Uh, that's about it for tips on how to win Pazak. Next up is we're going to talk about the Galaxy map and what path you should take on the order of plans you should do. In Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, the galaxy map is definitely back. So once you recover the Ebon Hawk on Telos, the second planet of the uh, game, then you'll be able to uh, travel the galaxy. So I'm gonna go ahead and give everybody an order of plans you should do to get your lightsaber faster and the best equipment. So here we go on this order. The order of planets you should do after Telos to get your first lightsaber ASAP. So here we go, Narshada. That is the city slash urban planet. Reason being is uh, you'll have Vista in the party for the first time. You have to beat her once you do. You get one lightsaber part. You already got one from Telos. So that'll be number two. The third one is at the docks. 
you either have to do a quest or if you are a dark side character, you have to murder someone for it. Next is uh, Duxum and uh, Odoron. Yeah, those are planned. In order to get to Odoron, you have to get to uh, Duxum. So you have to do those two uh, next. After that is Dan and Wayne. So once you finish Dan and Wayne, then you go back to uh, Dux and Odoron to finish that story up. Last but not least is Korriban. So once you finish with that, then it's end game. So that's the order of plans you should definitely do in the uh, game. So uh, for the uh, next part of this uh, guide is, of course, side quests. The side quests is in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic too. The Sith Lords you should definitely do. Some of them will open up other side quests. Other will give you nice rewards. And one of them will actually open up a new uh, shop. Or say there's a Zishin shop that will definitely get upgraded. You should definitely do them all because you should get much experience as you want. So this way you level up much more faster. And your characters get much more powerful. So uh, let's go over the next section is the influence system. And Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, influence can determine either your party members follow your alignment or go the opposite way. So, for example, with my dark side character, Ant will follow me through hell and back while T3M4 is hesitant because of the fact it's the exact opposite of the alignment. So, I'm going to go ahead and give you a nice uh, list of uh, which character gains or loses on cunning, good, or uh, psychotic actions. So, here we go. What type of action characters uh, gain or lose influence on? Now, uh, please note this is just actions out in the world, not dialogue. So, as always, save the game. I'll remind everybody about that once again uh, towards the end of this section. Number one, and gains on good and psychotic action. So, you do something good or uh, bad, he's fine with it. He doesn't care. Bale Dirt gains on good actions, however, loses on psychotic actions. So, if you decide to uh, have fun murdering people, he will not like that. Number three, Disciple gains on good actions, however, loses on psychotic actions. See, uh, Beodur. Go to uh, gains on psychotic actions and loses on good actions. It's a strange one out there, but you really want to raise go to's influence. That's fine as well. So let's get to the next set of uh, characters. Next up is Handmaiden. She gains on good actions and loses on psychotic actions. Now, uh, this one's a special case because you gain a whole bunch of influence by. Uh, go ahead and uh, face her in uh, unarmed combat three times. And once that is uh, done, it's a good uh, chance you'll definitely uh, gear the class change. But still, if you bring her out to the world, that's her uh, view on the uh, actions and such. Hanhar loses on good actions. Howard gains on psychotic actions. Yeah, this Wookiee is really evil. HK-47 loses on good actions. Howard gains on psychotic actions. So, like for example, at a cantina, you... Uh, or HK-47 throw a grenade, HK-47 will love you for that. Kraya gains on cunning actions only, however loses on good and psychotic actions. Consider like the uh, Grey Jedi for Kraya, middle of the road type of person. Let's move on to the last four companions. Next up is Mandalore gains on psychotic actions, loses on good actions. Yeah, Mandalore is more of a dark side line type of character without the use of force powers. You'll see why when you recruit him in this uh, game. Mira gains on good actions and loses on psychotic actions. Yeah, she's a real good uh, aligned character. T3 and 4 gains on good actions and loses on psychotic actions. I tested this out and let me uh, tell you, T3 and 4 does not like it when you kill an innocent on Dan and Ween. You know which one you first arrive at the planet with T3 and 4 on a dark side playthrough. Last but not least, Vista is easy. She gains on all actions. Cunning, good, psychotic, she doesn't care. She's influenced by you either way. There are some influence gained or lost through dialogue. So save before talking to any companions. That's really important. So this way you uh, get that max influence. That's about it for uh, influence. Next up is crafting. And Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1. You can upgrade items. However, it slightly made a difference. With exception of uh, lightsabers, it was the crystals that mainly uh, boosted up your damage and such. And Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, crafting got expanded. It's its own piece of stuff. Here you use lab stations to craft, for example, certain implants, grenades, uh, healing items and such, or workbenches to craft items that are upgradable for weapons and armor. So uh, here's the deal. You want to make sure you have someone enough uh, crafting skills to go ahead and do so. 
if you have issues of, for example, try to get computer uh, used to up there, uh, you want to do is have a Jedi in your party to uh, cast Force Valor. That will boost up like most likely their intelligence or the attribute link to the skill. So I decided to boost up Bayo Dur's uh, computer use just by using Force Valor, the highest rank. So all uh, you want to do is uh, definitely, uh, if you need to, start breaking down items. So use the breakdown option for that as uh, well. After that, then you start crafting certain items. So we're going to go ahead and craft the ultimate dilithium cell. Now, I'm just loving off uh, Bayo Dur like normal. Unfortunately, yeah, he is not able to uh, craft some of the uh, stealth items, but still, I'm going to get enough. A good idea to always break down items that you're not going to really use, or if you feel like you have enough uh, credits, uh, break them down. Especially some of the nice heavy ones. Thermal grenades are very great for uh, breaking down parts as well, so this way you get a lot uh, for it, more bang for your uh, buck. So uh, once you are done breaking down items and start crafting them, I'm going to go ahead and turn a lightsaber that is uh, normally, uh, I think I remember right, up to uh, 20, 30 damage to a lot more. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. Let's see here. I'm just going to finish breaking things down. So, uh, yeah, a good idea also to break down uh, mines because they give you sometimes a lot of components. Kind of like a whole bunch of free components in uh, fact. Yeah, from my first uh, playthrough, I got a lot of mines thanks to uh, Goto's ship. Yeah, Goto has been very useful. So I'm finishing that up. I'm going to go ahead and craft as much as I can. Then I'm going to show everybody the upgrade. And that should definitely do it. Let's go ahead and uh, craft uh, the uh, expert fencing emitter. We can't do the Ponti Lens, so we'll uh, do another one that's a better one. So once you are done crafting items that you need, then the uh, next step is go ahead and upgrade them. So we're going to go ahead and install them. You can also, for lightsaber, install crystals the same way. So we're going to get rid of these uh, weaker uh, items. There you go. All right, your damage is uh, really going up there, so our stock's up there. So take a full advantage of crafting because you're going to be making one powerful weapon or some armor that will help you out in attributes and much, much uh, more. I'm going to go over some final advice. When you uh, first create your character, plan accordingly. Are you going to be a heavy force user, someone in between, or a frontline fighter? So if you're going for a frontline fighter, Jedi Guardian is the way to go with uh, focus on strength. Uh, if you're going for a, for example, heavy force user, then uh, focus on uh, wisdom. If you're going, for instance, a uh, Jedi Sentinel, you're go for wisdom or better yet, uh, uh, strength. Now, uh, you want to make sure every one of your main character has 18 uh, constitution, so this way he or she can use all implants. Uh, definitely, you'll want to make sure you get repair and uh, persuade max out, then uh, focus on anything else like awareness and uh, treat injury. Take full advantage of crafting. Even if you're not crafting, have someone like Bale during the party to craft for you. He's the best character uh, for that as well. Get used to uh, crowd control and combat. You're asking, why is that? Well, if you could lock down your foes, like for example with Sandy or uh, Stun or even Stun Droid, then uh, they won't do anything. You could do a lot of damage you and or your uh, party members, like for example, Atten. Uh, make sure you uh, experiment with party members because this way you see who fits in your uh, playstyle, who does uh, not. Take advantage of uh, stances like, for example, uh, the uh, Force Orb one that's uh, good as uh, well. Uh, another one is... is uh, now, AI ones, like for example, uh, you want to be aggressive or stationary. Stationary is a good one because you don't run like an animal to uh, enemies. As, uh, well, another thing is uh, play your alignment. So if you're going for light side, then uh, make sure you do good actions. If you're going for a dark side, go for evil, selfish actions. Use my uh, tips to make money. Also uh, for Galaxy Maps to help you out greatly. Last but not least, this is the most important tip of the uh, game. Enjoy this game. It's a real blast. It's a great classic. This is it from my Don't Panic Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 new player video guide. This is Lord Fenton signing off. Thanks for watching and have a great day or night. Do please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more Star Wars content just like this. If you like what you see, then pick my suggestion on the upper left hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left hand corner. May the force be with you.